Do you have a covenantal relationship with a loyal spiritual friend? Welcome to the Daily Devo. I, of course, am Vince Miller. A little shameless plug right here today. Don't forget to check out the new Vince Miller show. I put a link in the show notes below. There will be a brand new episode every week on Mondays. The difference between what we do here and there is that here in the Daily Devo, we're going to continue to work through the Bible one book at a time devotionally. Over on the show, we will tackle topics and series that are relevant to your life, biblical, thematic, and practical as always. I am super excited about this new endeavor, and I need you to be praying for us weekly as we launch it. Now back to our devotional. This week we are in 1 Samuel chapter 20. I've titled this chapter, Friendship and Loyalty in Adversity. Friendship and Loyalty Through Adversity. So in the last chapter, we left off with David leaving Saul's house forever, never to return, leaving behind his good friend Jonathan and his wife Michal. Now this chapter is a chronicle of David trying to figure out if there's some permanent change in Saul after his experience with the spirit in Naoth. So David is going to secretly consult with Jonathan, not in the king's palace, but outside of it to just try to see if it's safe to come back. And of course, spoiler alert, we know it's not. (laughs) But the final verse of this chapter punctuates a covenant that the two men make between each other. It is the key verse of the chapter, so you may want to highlight this one. It is verse 42. It reads, Then Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, because we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord shall be between me and you, And between my offspring and your offspring forever. And he rose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Whew. Kind of a sad, heavy moment. A final departure by two great friends who now make a covenant with each other. And this is an important transition in the life of David. In fact, if we survey the whole life of David, we can evenly divide the segments of David's life into four seasons. Four seasons, here they are. They all begin with S. I'm trying to make it easy for you. The shepherding season, the struggling season, the soldiering season, and then the sovereign season. Shepherding, struggling, soldiering, and sovereign. Right here, we are in the second season. It's about to begin. It's the struggling season or the hiding years. And chapter 20 begins with a 12 to about 15 year stretch during which David runs from King Saul for his life. That is a long time. (laughs) And we all know this, right? Long seasons of trials are trying. Imagine that. And when we enter them, we often have no idea what we're getting into. I mean, David right here in this moment in chapter 20 has no idea what's about to happen or how long it's going to take for him to move from being anointed king to appointed king. You see, he has been anointed king, but it's long until he's going to be appointed king. But he did have one thing right here we see. He had a friend, a confidant, and a brother in Jonathan, and they were going to depart from each other, making a covenantal agreement that would carry on and be fulfilled many years down the road, even after Jonathan's death. By the way, you have to see how that all turns out in 2 Samuel. Now, you know, for some reason, covenants between godly men are kind of missing from the modern church. At least that was my first thought when I saw this here. You know, I kind of wonder if believers have become too casual and transactional in our relationships. If we enter into most relationships just to get something and not to give, and if we are unwilling to commit to the initiative and the investment that a covenant like this would require. But I know this, Every one of us, me and you included, encounters a struggling season. That's one of the seasons of our life. For some, this is going to be short, and for others, it may be prolonged. You probably don't want to hear that. Some of you are in one right now because you're either in one, going into one, or coming out of one. But I know this, a covenant agreement with a loyal and godly friend makes the journey much easier. It should. It should. Because it's like an anchor anchored into the earth when life feels adrift. It anchors us to the Lord. It anchors us to a godly believer. It anchors us to an unchanging agreement. It anchors us emotionally, mentally, and spiritually when we question everything. 
including the future. So here's my question. Are you going through a struggling season? Then maybe it's time to make a covenant. Maybe not exactly like the one Jonathan and David made here, a lifelong covenantal promise that extended into the future and future generations, but but maybe you need to make a covenant agreement with a brother for a season. Who is that person? And what is that covenant that you need to make? And if you cannot think of either, maybe it's time to take some initiative and make an investment to discover the spiritual blessings that awake. You know what I believe? I believe it's time to bring back the covenant of relationship. I love you guys. I pray this will bless you. If it has, share it with someone else, and I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.